Welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and this Math Solution is for the cards facing down puzzle. That's where you have a number of cards which are initially not all face down. So we did it with four in the original puzzle video and then someone else has to say which cards to flip with the goal of eventually getting them all face down at some point. And the question was for four cards, what's the minimum, the fewest number of flips required? And not just how many, but what are those flips such that you're guaranteed at some point they will all be face down and you win the game. I've got uh, some of the solutions people sent in on my laptop here. Thank you so much, all the people who sent things through. We had a great time going through them. And um, you can see that's my laptop screen next to me there. What we have here is a, a semi-random selection of some of our favorite ones. But first of all, the solution uh, was uh, 15. There, it's 15 is the fewest moves that guarantee you will definitely get them all face down at some point in time. And uh, well done to the 3,146 people who got this puzzle correct. That's great work. We've updated the leaderboard. So if you go to the Think Mass website, you can check that out and you can see where you are now. And don't forget that as puzzles get further and further back in time, the points you got for those are worth less and less. And so um, you need to keep doing puzzles if you want to maintain your position. And if you've only just started doing puzzles, don't worry, you can still make your way up the leaderboard. So how do we know that 15 was the minimum? Well, a lot of people uh, caught on to this, that there are 16 ways that you can have the four cards either face up or face down, because you've got two options for each card, face up, face down, and there are four of them. And uh, two to the power of four is 16. But we know that they're not going to be all face down to start with. And if you get them face down, that's when the game ends. And so uh, you've got these 16 arrangements. Each time you flip a card, you get one new arrangement. And this seems obvious, but I'm gonna state it. You only have one arrangement at a time. You, I mean, you've only got four cards in front of you, right? At no point are there gonna be two arrangements at the same time. And because you need to cycle through all of them, worst case scenario, that's 15 flips because you have to do them one at a time. So 15 is the minimum. The question now is, how do you do those flips such that you cycle through them in the most efficient way possible? People sent in some great solutions for how they did this. So some people obviously had a technique and wanted to show that it worked. So Franco sent in, a, well, I say our video, it's 16 simultaneous videos showing that their series of moves would guarantee that for every conceivable starting arrangement, at some point they would all be face down. And when they go face down, Franco would then stop doing it. So you can see uh, sequentially one after the other, they're all face down. And in fact, if I skip through this, so great work, Franco, synchronizing that all up. By the time you get to the end of the video, um, you can see the very last ones um, go into place. And so that's uh, excellent, excellent work. Um, Alec did a similar thing, but they animated their moves uh, as if they were stacks. And so they show, and you can see from the bottom there, they stop animating once they go all green. So green is the desired state. So it's a great way of showing that it works. Uh, Domus realized that you're basically working your way around a network. So you start in one of these cases, and then you've got to find a way that the moves you make uh, move you around the network. And I thought that was a very nice way to think about it, great way to demonstrate it, particularly like the fact that Domus got them arranged in the shape of a heart. So there you are, great work. In fact, you can just do an artistic representation of the puzzle and I'll try and get it in the video. Now, a lot of people didn't just do this in terms of uh, ups and, oh yeah, sorry, and here's Thomas's video showing that the moves they had is a path that goes all the way around. So I think for completeness, there it is, hey. So that's how they could visually check that their solution worked. Now, um, oh, sorry, I, I forgot we put in Christian's one. This is great. So uh, Christian came up with a systematic way for any number of cards to work out what flips in what order will move you through all of them. And this is a pattern that comes up reasonably often in mathematics. And so this is the ABA, C, ABA, and so on sequence. So you take your starting sequence, and then you put the next character you've not used, and then you repeat your starting sequence. So you start with A, and then you put a B after it, then A again, and then you have ABA, C, and then all of ABA, and then you'll have all of that, all seven characters, D, and then all seven characters. Again, not to be confused, 
with the two-way Morse sequence I've talked about in older videos. That's the A, B, B, A, B, A, A, B sequence. Then that's where you've got to invert them. And there, I mean, a lot of things in mathematics involve taking a sequence, putting a thing, and then having the same sequence again, sometimes flipped, sometimes inverted, but then you put it on the end. So if you've seen some of my videos on super permutations, this will be very familiar because it's a very similar approach. And that's, a gr Christian, great work. Love that. Now, um, a lot of people realized that basically you're working with binary because if you're looking at something that can be in two possible states, then binary. And, and it's just a case of it, you know, you could do it entirely without thinking about binary and binary is not special. It's just a nice way to encode it. And if you can turn the cards up and down into binary numbers, then you can take things we already know about binary numbers and you can try and utilize that. And there's a lot of mathematics is, can you take a situation, turn it into an equivalent situation, but in a different area of mathematics where we have more mathematical tools at our disposal. So a lot of people did that. A lot of people then just played around with it in the binary. And so this is a spreadsheet that was um, sent in. This was a sibling pair. This is Avery and her brother Skylar. They worked together. They did this. Um, well, they displayed it all eventually in this spreadsheet. They also sent in photos of their working out where they tried to find a circuit of the binary numbers and they arranged them such that directly opposite binary numbers were inverses of each other. Very clever, great great work um, uh, to both of you, working as a team, good to see that. Um, and a lot of people realized it's something called a gray code. So this is, when I alluded to there's some interesting mathematics, I was actually thinking initially uh, about gray codes. We'll get to some of the other bits in a moment. And the gray code, this is a real part of uh, maths. You use this when dealing with binary numbers. It's the way to minimize how many bits you've got to flip to cycle through every possible binary value, which is exactly what we were doing here. So this is the gray code puzzle. And so if you want to look up gray codes, you can find some more uh, mathematics about them online. So a lot of people realized it was gray codes, and then they looked into using gray codes to be able to solve this with the binary which is fantastic. Uh, and James, who um, uploaded uh, videos previously. In fact, I think they've done a solution video for every single puzzle. They did a video. I've taken off um, the voiceover and I'm skipping through it in high speed now, but I'll link to their video and everything else I show, I'll link to below. So they realized, basically they've got a nice explanation that it's a gray code um, you can go and check out. A lot of people then realized that if you take binary numbers, they give you corners of a cube. And because we had four values here, the binary numbers are the zero and one coordinates of a 4D hypercube or a tesseract. And so Tenry here sent in a fantastic diagram showing that every possible arrangement of the cards corresponds to a corner on a 4D hypercube. And so what you're trying to do is just move around the cube. You're trying to find a Hamiltonian path which uh, goes around. Because if you take go to the same corner more than once, uh, the same vertex, then that's inefficient. So the most efficient path just does one every single time. New corner, every single move. One of my personal favorites, and they sent in an animation for this, is Sasha. They, again, hypercube, but then they put the cards on systematically. So first of all, they put them all face down on the cube face, the cell, to the left and face up on the right. And then they did opposite cubes the other way. So now it's face up at the one on the top, face down the one on the bottom. You do that with the two other opposite pairs. And now you've got a unique arrangement of cards on every single corner. And they're exactly analogous. Like this, this is the puzzle. There's no need to go through the binary step in the middle. And then they, um, they started with the, okay, so they're not gonna start all face down, but they began there. And then they um, labeled the cards for the direction you're moving and then found a path that goes around. So Sasha. Fantastic work, um, really like that. And for me, that's my favorite way, because I know gray codes are technically it. Um, this is my favorite way to kind of visualize and get my head around what's happening, because it links together that you've got all the different values, you're trying to find the shortest path that goes through all of them, and the card that you're flipping corresponds to which dimension you're moving on the journey. Ah, it's so lovely, nice. Uh, although. Special mention for the person who realized there's a picture of a 4D cube on my book, Things to Make and Do in the Fourth Dimension. And so they used my the cover of my book to solve. Um, so Juan, well done for incorporating my book into your solution. 
You don't get any bonus points, um, but you do get a special mention. Of course, people did some programming, and loads of people sent in Python code. Um, now, Oliver, who's helping out doing the database, doing the um, leader table, they went through all the code that was sent in, and they picked their favorite. So, uh, Peter, Peter Anderson, your um, code was Oliver's favorite, and so we checked it, and it all runs. This is on GitHub, so I'll put the link to the GitHub below, and you can go and check it out and see what Peter's done and the way it all works. Ah, it's really nice. And of course, some people wrote full-on papers, like very long solutions, and oh, uh, Rish Arb, sorry if I've pronounced that incorrectly, wrote a fantastic paper where they went through and they looked at all the mathematics behind it, and again, they're looking at it as a network or a graph and how you'd navigate your way around it. So I'll link to uh, Rishab's paper below, so you can go and check that out. Um, now, other people did some other crazy stuff. So I think I've got about three last things I want to show you. So Stephen here has got an interactive version that you can play for any number of cards, and you can go through and you can run a sequence of checks to show that you will eventually get it. And so that's really good fun. I'll link to that if you want to go um, have a play with it. Uh, we've got some working out. So again, you don't have to do anything fancy. You can just send a photo of your working out. Kevin, Good work. Although, Kevin, I don't know if you can read it at the bottom there, it says, not a rigorous proof, Parker proof. So, points off. You know, okay, Kevin, you still, there are no points. There are no points for sending stuff in. But thanks for doing it, uh, you jerk. Okay, uh, and very lastly, my absolute favorite thing that was sent in, sorry to pick a favorite, but this is it, what Adam did. They showed that you could link the sequence. So this is the sequence that we had before that I think it was um, Christian sent in, the A, B, A, C, A, B, A sequence. They've also linked it to going around a hypercube. They've got the actual cards animated and they've realized it's the same thing as the Towers of Hanoi solution. And that's because they probably realized that traversing a hypercube is equivalent to a solution of a Towers of Hanoi puzzle. So you can see the puzzle happening over there on the right. And that's it. That's what I love about mathematics. That all these things, despite feeling very different, and you could discover any of these individually, but behind the scenes is the same logic it's the same mathematics. And for me, that's a great puzzle. Sure, you can just solve it, and loads of people, that's fine, you put in your solution, but the longer you play with it, the more you look at it, you find these links. And for me, mathematics is the discovery and exploitation of patterns. It's just beautiful. So there you are, those are all the solutions you sent in. Thank you uh, so much everyone who got involved, and we are done. Hey, I'm here. So welcome to Matt Parker's Maths Solutions. Now, I'm Matt Parker, and what are you doing here? Yeah, I've, I'm really sorry. I've already done the solution video. What? No, but I... Yeah, you... it's it's all done, so... Oh yeah, you've gone um, through it all. I'm, I'm really sorry, I, I didn't mean to summon you. I was quite happy, I got it all done myself, and yeah, so that's it, so I'm really sorry. No, that's... Uh, we yeah, don't need you. go, so buddy. You go... Wait, wait, no! All right, so now we're free of that guy, I can do uh, the final wrap up. So thank you so much as always for watching the solution videos here for uh, Matt Parker's Maths Puzzles. As I mentioned before, I've now got Oliver and Deanna helping me out and so they helped me go through all the stuff you sent in and updating the website and the leaderboard. Huge thanks to them. And uh, thanks and sorry to everyone who sent stuff in and I wasn't able to include it in this video. I love seeing all the mathematics and videos and animations and stuff that comes in. I'm sorry I can't fit it all in the video. Do keep sending it in. We took one week off from doing a puzzle uh, last week, so there wasn't one Wednesday a couple of days ago, but we will have a new one out on Wednesday next week. So you've got less than a week to wait for the next puzzle. Make sure you're ready to do some mathematics, and thank you so much everyone who's getting involved.